These two oils are the same viscosity, the same specification, and they're even made by the same manufacturer. So are they the same inside or not? I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Let's find out. Before we answer that question, I wanna take a second and say thank you to everyone that's watched and commented on our videos. It's overwhelmingly cool to see how many people just like you are interested in the science of motor oil. Speaking of science, I'm collecting samples from those old oils we found here in Dad's shop in the last video. We're sending them off to speed diagnostics, shaken and unshaken, and we will show you the results in the next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss those results. Speaking of results, let's get back to Quaker State versus Pennzoil. Pennzoil and Quaker State are two of the most iconic brands of motor oil, both from the state of Pennsylvania using the old Pennsylvania grade crude back in the day established you know, big time brands. That's why they're still around. Interestingly enough, they actually joined forces about 20 years ago in the early 2000s. And then they were both purchased by Shell. So today, both Pennzoil and Quaker State are brands that was called Sopus. Shell Oil Product Company US. So the question is, are they the same thing? Is Shell just getting more money for the Pennzoil than the Quaker State? Is it marketing or is there real science behind it? Well, you know us, we're gonna dig into the science, right? We, we wanna know what the science tells us. We're not gonna speculate. So we use speed diagnostics to analyze a sample of both the Pennzoil Platinum and the Quaker State Synthetic, and here are the results. Okay, I promise I won't interrupt the video again, but speaking of old oil and iconic brands of oil, would you be interested in a video about the history of motor oil? If so, leave a comment below. All right, now back to the results. The first thing I wanted to look at that I was most curious about was when you look at that label on Pennzoil, it says made from natural gas using the GTL base oil. We talked about this in a previous video where we looked at the non-synthetic Pennzoil products up to the Pennzoil Platinum and Ultra Platinum, you know, the full synthetic products. So if you want to get more into that, we'll leave the link in the description box below so you can go back and watch that video that gets into those details. So we knew that the GTL base oil looks different than the other base oils when we look at what's called the FTIR scan. So let's begin there. This is going to be the first kind of hint into are these oils the same or are they different? The Pennzoil bottle says made from natural gas. The Quaker State bottle doesn't. So that's the first thing that could be a clue that there's a difference between the two. So let's look at that first. And when we look at that FTIR scan, it is really obvious when we look at the base oil spike, that big, tall, broad one. And when you look at the very top of it, you can see the difference between the two. The Pennzoil GTL, which is that natural gas, you know, gas to liquid process, has that very narrow top. That's the key sign. We saw that same change from the conventional Pennzoil to the Pennzoil Platinum. We see the same thing here between the Quaker State and the Pennzoil Platinum. What that tells us is the Pennzoil is using the GTL just like before, the Quaker State is not. So that's the first sign that the Quaker State is different. So the next thing, when we go look at the additive package, boom, there's a second difference right there. And it's really obvious. These two oils are not the same. The additive package is completely different. The Quaker State has 1,251 parts per million calcium detergent compared to the 780 parts per million calcium detergent in the Pennzoil. When we look at the magnesium detergent, they're about the same, 356, 321, that's essentially the exact same. It's that more calcium that kind of stands out. So hang on to that, we're gonna come back to maybe why that is. We look at the zinc and the phosphorus, they're pretty similar, slightly more zinc phosphorus in the Quaker State than the Pennzoil. That's gonna relate back to the same thing with the calcium detergent. There's a reason for that, so hang on to that. Also, 
molybdenum. We have a higher level of moly in the Quaker state than we do the Pennzoil. So you might be tempted to think, well, there's more additive in the Quaker state, therefore it must be a better oil. More isn't always better. There's a reason that the Quaker state is having to add more additive to get to the same performance level. Remember, both of these oils meet the GM Dexos 1 Gen 3 spec. It's a pretty tight spec for a passenger car motor oil to have to pass. The reason for the higher level of calcium, ZDP, and moly in the Quaker state compared to the Penn's oil goes back to that difference in base oil, which we just talked about. The GTL base oil in the Penn's oil is better. It doesn't need as much additive to pass the test because cleanliness is a big part of it. They're having to add more of those additives in the Quaker state because it's not using that same GTL base oil. That's the biggest difference here between the Penn's oil and the Quaker state is the base oil, which is so funny because back in the day, they were both Pennsylvania grade crude. They were probably pretty much had this exact same base oil back in the day. Now today, they don't. We've got the new GTL base oil in the Penn's oil. We've got what looks to be a group three base oil in the Quaker state. And because of the difference in the base oil quality, you see the difference in the additive package in order to be able to pass the GM Dexo spec. So there it is. Shell makes both products, but they're completely different, even though they get to the same viscosity and they get to the same spec. Okay, so I lied, but I didn't interrupt the video. We're at the end of the video. This is the wrap up part. But before we go, I wanted to give you an update on two things. One, I mentioned in a previous video that I was using the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum in my Porsche Boxster. We got about 2,000 miles on it right now, so we're getting pretty close to that first 3,000 mile oil change so we can compare the results of that Pennzoil Ultra Platinum to the other oils I've run in that engine before. So we'll come back with a video with those results once we have those results. The other thing I wanted to mention is that neither Pennzoil, Quaker State, Mobile, or any other brand of oil sponsors this channel. This is 100% independent. There are no sponsors. The reason that I've used some of these products in these videos is primarily because I was very curious about the Shell GTL base oil that's being used in some of these products. Shell has refineries. They also have blending and distribution. But most importantly, Shell is co-owner of one of the additive companies called Infinium. You see, when it comes to every brand of motor oil on the planet, there are four companies that make the additive packages that go into these oils. That's Lubrizol, Afton, Ornite, and Infinium. Infinium is a joint venture between Shell and ExxonMobil. That's one of the reasons why those are the products that have been most featured in these videos because I know that, okay, both ExxonMobil and Shell, they make their own base oil. They own Infinium. They make their own additive packages. So I, it gives me the ability to understand a little bit better the differences between their products when I know that they have base oil supply and they have additive supply essentially in-house. Most brands don't have that. And that's not knocking other brands. That's just for the sake of making these videos and teaching and educating. You want to work from a firm foundation of knowledge. So when Shell says they have GTL base oil in their product, you know they do because they make it. When they say that additive package makes a Dexo spec, you know they do because they own Infinium that made that additive package. Those are the kind of little details that we're back to the motto of this channel. It's science over speculation. We want to remove speculation. So that's the reason why I've used some of these different brands. But going forward, we will definitely look at all the different brands. I know everyone wants to know my opinion on Amsoil. We're going to get there <laughs> in due time. But I wanted to go through this process in the correct order. From my perspective, chemistry comes before brands. The last thing you should be choosing is the brand. Most people choose brand first. I look at it differently. I choose chemistry first, 
then it's the brand that I trust that can deliver that chemistry, which is why I've chosen the products that I've chosen so far for the videos we've done so far. Like I said, we're gonna get to all other brands in time. Remember, this isn't my day job. I do this on the weekends when I have time, but I do it for you, the viewer, because I love it that you guys are engaged. You're asking awesome questions. You wanna know the science about motor oil, not speculation. That's why I'm here to give it to you. Again, I'm Lake, the Motor Oil Geek. If you've made it this far and you wanna watch some more, we've got more coming for you.